Dr. Marwa Abdullah. She's a very well-known international expert on vitiligo. She will be speaking on DPCP as a depigmentic therapy in extensive vitiligo. and thank you so much for staying so late. Um, I will uh, talk about a new idea that we had in using a DPCP or diphenylcyclopropanone as a depigmenting agent uh, in extensive vitiligo. It's a pilot study and um, you all know that uh, we uh, use depigmentation in patients who have extensive vitiligo, especially in uh, exposed areas uh, and uh, who are resistant to other treatments. Um, uh, and uh, until now, there is no present, uh, there is no ideal therapy for the depigmentation. Uh, the most commonly used depigmenting agents are uh, monobenzyl ether of hydroquinone, which is the, what was actually the first FDA approved uh, tool in treating vitiligo. Uh, before roxotinib and uh, Q-switch laser and cryotherapy. Uh, and uh, there are other tools like phenol 88%, monomethyl ether of hydroquinone, etc. And each one of them has its side effects. So monobenzyl ether could um, depigment other uh, distant areas. It, it, it can induce irritation, uh, eczema, etc. Cryotherapy is painful and the Q-switch laser is painful and expensive. Um, th there is a list of uh, uh, drugs that induce uh, uh, chemical vitiligo, uh, like uh, diphencyclopropanone um, uh, that we are going to speak about, imatinib, imikimod, and uh, other phenols. Um, DPCP is a contact sensitizer which is used or has been used for ages uh, as a topical immunotherapy in alopecia, areata, and warts, and uh, it, it uh, caused the vitiligo in uh, um, alopecia areata patients as a side effect. So we thought of using it in vitiligo because melanocytes in vitiligo are more sensitive to injury by phenolic chemicals than melanocytes. Uh, in normal skin and uh, or normal per uh, people, and uh, also DPCP is one of the causes of Kebner phenomenon in patients with vitiligo. So uh, we used uh, DPCP to uh, treat extensive uh, vitiligo. This is a um, pilot study, and um, uh, we uh, have it registered on clinicaltrials.gov. And uh, we included patients, adults, uh, with a vitiligo universalis, with uh, body surface area involvement more than 50%, especially if exposed, and those with extensive acral vitiligo who uh, show resistance to a standard therapy. We counseled the patients before starting, and then we told them sun protection and sun avoidance should be continued uh, throughout their lives, and uh, that uh, this depigmentation is a final decision. There is no go back from it. So uh, we uh, excluded, of course, children because it's not indicated to, to, de to give depigmenting agents in children and uh, early localized segmental vitiligo, etc. Um, each patient had an informed consent and uh, history taking and the VEDA score and VEST score uh, was, uh, were evaluated and uh, we sensitized the patients uh, on day zero uh, by 2% DPCP. Um, uh, in an area on the forearm, five by five centimeters, and two weeks later, the patient was examined uh, for contact dermatitis, and then uh, from week three, we started um, weekly application of incremental doses of uh, 0.001% uh, percent until we can reach the maximum, which is 2%, adjusted according to the patient's reactivity to the contact allergen, but we did not reach 2% in most of the cases. Uh, the aim was to maintain a mild contact eczema and itch for about 48 hours after application, and patients were instructed to avoid direct sun exposure of the treated area and not to wash it for 48 hours after each application. And we followed up um, by the, the depigmentation according to Van Gill et al. 2015, uh, uh, in a scale from zero to six, uh, where zero is no effect and six is 100%, and uh, the patients should report side effects. 
uh, we included 20, percent, 20 patients and 12 patients uh, continued the, um, uh, the study because um, it was done during the era of uh, COVID and the four patients did not show up after sensitization and another four patients did not cont uh, continue for the 12 weeks. Uh, so they were also excluded, and from the 12 patients who continued, five of them achieved depigmentation, which is only 40%, and seven patients uh, had 60%, uh, which are 60%, they did not show any depigmentation. Um, and uh, these are pictures of showing uh, the depigmentation uh, with um, woods light and with daylight. And this patient, for example, uh, achieved grade five depigmentation. It was at, as early as three weeks, uh, uh, I mean, uh, three years after three sessions of, at week four, uh, using a low concentration. And uh, here you can see, which is be better seen by woods light, on the right, a square of um, a depigmentation, uh, which is a depigmentation, um, a diffuse depigmentation. We have two patterns of depigmentation in our patients. Um, and uh, uh, this is uh, um, a patient who showed a spotty depigmentation, which started at week eight and continued even after we finished our uh, study at 12 weeks. We, she came back 50, uh, at week 15, and she had increase in this uh, spotty depigmentation and coalescence of depig the depigmented areas. Uh, um, interesting, interestingly, we sh uh, saw that depigmentation uh, occurred at the site of sensitization in three of our patients, and in these three patients, we, they showed is a more faster and more easy uh, depigmentation in uh, the other areas treated later. Uh, you can see in the upper uh, photos erythema and blistering, and then uh, 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 this uh, resulted in depigmentation. However, not all the patients who experienced blistering showed uh, depigmentation. It's not only uh, um, a Kerbner phenomenon, it, is, uh, it has um, a, a, another mechanism of action as well. Uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 these uh, patients, oh, <laughs> I will finish. <laughs> um, these patients, uh, as I said, uh, they had uh, depigmentation elsewhere. Uh, the major side effect of DPCP was the itching. The itching was the uh, factor that, may, uh, that caused many patients to be unwilling to uh, repeat or to do it in other areas. So uh, we have to look how to uh, decrease this itching in the future. But uh, we have proven that DPCP is an additional tool for depigmentation. It resulted in 40% depigmentation in our study group. And uh, this is, of course, less than that uh, which is seen with Q-switch laser and cryotherapy, as uh, reported before by Mofti et al. Uh, younger patients depigmented more readily. Depigmentation occurred at uh, four to six weeks uh, with DPCP. And this is comparable to the time where depigmentation occurred with monobenzyme ether of hydroquinone, 20% uh, and 40%. Uh, cosmetic results uh, of uh, DPCP um, were good. It was only depigmentation without erythema, without scarring. Phenol, for example, when it was tried before, it leaves very long-term uh, erythema and it may lead to scarring. Similarly, if we go a little bit more aggressive with cryotherapy, it will also lead to depigmentation. Uh, so, uh, on the other hand, uh, again, uh, DPCP did not show the, these uh, side effects. Uh, as I said, the main bothers, uh, some uh, side effect was itching, and maybe if we start by giving the patient uh, slow, uh, um, slowly increments of uh, DPCP, starting by 0.1 percent, uh, and continuing with it, it will, we get the depigmentation without this severe itch or the severe side effects. Other side effects uh, that were encountered, um, they, they were also seen with patients with alopecia areata. Um, and um, they are, as I said, all of the other depigmenting agents, they all have side effects. They all have problems, and the patients are suffering during depigmentation. So, um, 
We recommend using the small sensitization doses. Uh, more studies may be able to identify the exact mechanism of DPCP depigmentation. Also, studying larger number of patients with longer duration of follow-up could point out the factors determining uh, the positive depigmenting outcome of DPCP and the duration of sustained depigmentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any questions? So where do you think, like, uh, do you like uh, with MBH we see distant depigmentation also? It remain localized to the area of application or distant depigmentation is also? Uh, well, actually, uh, there were not a lot of patients, but uh, they, uh, uh, we, uh, what we saw is eczema elsewhere. We did not see uh, depigmentation elsewhere. Maybe the patients got it because... Um, it was really tough on continuing uh, this study because we started it and then we had the second lockdown in, uh, during COVID. And um, it was a master's thesis uh, of one of our uh, assistant lecturers, of one of our uh, residents. Uh, she's now an assistant lecturer. Uh, I mean, um, we had to finish. <laughs> we couldn't uh, continue uh, the... the um, study for a very long time, maybe we, we should start again, and in this uh, time, if we start again, we should uh, do it as 0.1%. The 2% sensitization is very harsh on many people. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.